Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Do Politicians Practice What They Preach? In this video, we're going to be taking a look at what is Republicanism. Now, this series is brought to you by our new book, Are All Lives Equal? Why Cost-Benefit Analysis Values Rich Lives More and How Philosophy Can Fix It? Stick around at the end of the video to learn more. The idea of republicanism goes back to, or of a republic, goes back to Plato. But republicanism is, as a philosophy, one of the least well understood of the political philosophies we present here. Although it represents essential ideas for holding many communities together and balancing competing interests, it is not particularly well understood, and it has diverged substantially from what we call republicanism today. There are two threads to republicanism, the idea of civic participation in society and the idea of separation of powers. We can trace the idea of republicanism as opposed to imperialism back to the Roman Empire. Now, one key element of republicanism can be traced to Machiavelli, who argued for a civically active populace. People should care about the well-being of their society and work towards its preservation, not merely work in their own self-interest. Republicanism, in this sense, is similar to, but importantly different from, democracy. In a democracy, people make the decisions. In a republic, people participate in the process of creating, debating, and implementing those decisions. In a republic, people are working towards a common good, not a personal one. There are important linkages to the philosophy of civic humanism, or classical republicanism. Check out our video on civic humanism for more on classical republicanism and its links to humanism. The other key component of republicanism comes from the idea of checks and balances. This is the idea that a well-run government should have different power centers that balance each other out. This can look like different branches of government that have different tasks, or different levels of government functioning independently of one another, or even different political parties being required to work together to pass a law or to form a government. This is claimed as a way to balance competing interests and demographic groups in a pluralistic society. The independence of these different groups is a key feature of republicanism. While all parts of a government are controlled by one person or when all parts of a government are controlled by one person or group, that is not a republic. It's an empire or a dictatorship, even if it looks like one on paper. If a president can fire legislators and Supreme Court justices at will, then these are not really co-equal branches of government. They cannot serve as checks and balances on each other. If a prime minister appoints the governors of various provinces and states instead of having them elected independently by their uh, constituents, then this is less Republican, as those lower levels of government cannot serve as a check on executive power. The checks and balances of a republic extend beyond official government institutions to include the so-called fourth estate of the media, which also serves as a check on government and the ability of the people to participate in protests and petition their government. This pairs together both threads of republicanism, both the civic participation side, because people are participating both through the media and in protests in their government and exchanges about government, and the accountability of government to its people by spreading out the power to other groups, such as the media and the public, through checks and balances. Now, there are several reasons why one might object to republicanism. In terms of civic participation, Many think that the overall populace is perhaps insufficiently educated to take an active hand in their own governance, as Plato argued, that instead we should rely on experts to make decisions instead of people who may be swayed by a clever advertisement here or a fallacious argument there. From the other direction, a progressive might object that republicanism prevents progress by stopping popularly elected presidents from making needed changes. And many dictatorships make a similar argument, arguing that republics have too many checks and balances that prevent anything from being done, and that dictatorship or single-party rule is a more effective process. However, this is a double-edged sword. 
The very systems that seem to be horrible bureaucratic obstacles when you're in power become life-saving institutions when you're out of power. The power of republicanism is that by spreading out this power, it prevents sweeping changes that do not have consensus support among those with power, and therefore only brings forward those things that everyone does in fact agree on. One might further question the need for justification for a republic. Why should there be checks and balances? If we have a liberal democracy that the rights of the majority and the minority are respected, what's the point of requiring a complex system with multiple loci of power? Is that just a process to ensure and enable further corruption through other people beyond a minimal executive level? Is it just a way to get the uh, grease the palms further out throughout the government and create an expansive bureaucracy. What's the point of it? The Republican might respond that these checks and balances are useful for maintaining a liberal democracy, not in and of themselves, but for the purpose of keeping that and preventing a powerful executive from overturning the right to elections or the rights of the minority. The Republican might respond along the lines of saying that this is the only way to prevent any system from turning to tyranny. Without other centers of power, it becomes too easy to change the rules of the game. Without civic participation in the process, it is easy for the elites to pull the wool over the eyes of everyone. The goal of Republicanism is to preserve democracy from sliding backwards and to combat corruption by ensuring that only through building wide coalitions where everyone can see transparently into the process can anything be done. One example of what might be considered Republican backsliding, but not Democratic backsliding, is what's happened recently in Tunisia. Note that this video is being pre-recorded, so it may not be up to date with the most recent events. Last year, a popularly elected president dismissed parliament and has since drafted a constitution that gives the majority of the power to the executive, to the president, substantially weakening the judiciary and the legislature, with little or no consultation with the public. The constitution is still democratic in the sense that the president is elected, but it is not republican in the sense that it is not consultative, it didn't give and allow for civic participation, and it concentrates power. It eliminates checks and balances. Are you interested in how philosophical principles play out in practice and on the international stage? Then you will love our new book, Are All Lives Equal? This book explores why economists value the lives of people in different countries less, and how philosophy can help us to develop a more accurate methodology. The book is available in paperback on Amazon right now. Check out the link in the description if you want to learn more, read some blogs on the book, um, or even read the first chapter yourself over on the website carneades.com. Org. Please do consider buying the book. Uh, it really helps the channel, um, and I do think there's some fascinating ideas in there uh, to get out into the world. What do you think? Should a government have checks and balances, or are they simply impediments to progress? Should there be multiple centers of power, or should an elected leader be able to do whatever they want because they were elected by the people? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe, hit the notification bell if you want, like this video and you want to see more, and you want to make sure you don't miss future videos from the channel. Watch this video and more here at carneades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.